So what if it's not classic fragile neuralgia? What if, you know, it's type two or what if there's a little bit of an inconsistent history? Um, it really depends on what the dominant symptom is for the patient and what you're trying to treat. Do we, do we use the same technique? But what if someone has type two, they have that chronic burning, gnawing pain, but they also have the zapping pain. Well, a lot of us believe, and it's acceptable and you know worth trying, the same techniques that would be used for classic trigonal neuralgia with the caveat that we're targeting the intermittent shocking type pain, that the underlying burning, gnawing, chronic pain probably is not gonna get better. Uh, but it can still be beneficial because of that, because we're treating a part of the pain, I tend to still not recommend a microvascular compression. I would lean towards either a balloon compression or a stereotactic radio surgery, uh, but we can still choose those. You can still recommend them, but you have to counsel patients about what to expect that it may not be as effective and that their, the risks are still there for uh, facial pain or anesthesia dolorosa. Now, what if you have a different type of pain? I talked about cluster headache a little bit, uh, you know, all those symptoms that we see there. Um, I just want to put this in here just so you know what the other treatments are. Um, it's really, uh, medical treatment is actually oxygen therapy, ergots, triptans, steroids. Some of the new uh, migraine-related medications uh, can be used as well. Um, as well, what's not on here is, uh, our NSAIDs can be very effective for cluster headache, which you think, wow, for something so severe, how would a NSAID work? But it does, it can work. Surgical treatments uh, vary across uh, different platforms. They are not the same treatments. So that's why I do specifically ask about autonomic symptoms. Um, I will uh, consider a spinothalatin ganglion block. Uh, hypothalamic DBS can be done. So targeting the hypothalamus and then occipital nerve stimulation, but that's become less common. There are other, uh, as I said, I mentioned the autonomic cephalalgias are uh, a whole class of them. They're, they can, there's different ones. Cluster headache is the most popular or most well-known, uh, but you can get paroxysmal hemicrania, which is, again, if you read this, you'll think, well, that sounds like trisomal neuralgia, but it's multiple severe short paroxysms of pain often around the eye. So the only difference is that it's near the eye. Um, SUNCs, which is short lasting unilateral neuralgia form headache with conjunctival injection and tearing. Sounds a lot like cluster headache, but if you didn't get the conjunctival injection and hearing, you'd think unilateral neuralgia form headache. Well, that sounds like a cluster, cluster headache, or that even sounds like trigeminal neuralgia, right? So um, those autonomic signs are absolutely imperative. Now, what about this sphenopalatine ganglion? Sphenopalatine ganglion, also known as the pterygopalatine ganglion, is right in the on the lateral aspect of your nasal wall. It um, is near uh, the V2 branch of the uh, trigeminal nerve. Uh, there are studies that show that uh, stimulation of the uh, pseudopathic ganglion can be effective, and uh, they can be effective both acutely in order to uh, resolve pain. So in this study. Uh, that I'm referencing here, there's complete resolution in 11 patients out of 18 treatments with uh, another three out of 18, so about another 20% having uh, partial, partial relief um, and then no relief in four. But that's a very effective for someone who doesn't have any other treatment. It's also been used in uh, migraine treatments. My most common approach to the pterygopalatine fossa or the pseudopalatine ganglion is to use a radiofrequency ablation, which can be done percutaneously through an infrazygomatic approach. Um, it can also be treated with stereotactic radio surgery. We can also place um, off-label uh, stimulators into the sphenopalatine ganglion uh, for long-term pain relief. Um, and as I mentioned, we can use uh, occipital nerve stimulation for cluster headache, although I've put this here for historical purposes. Um, I don't think it's used very often anymore. One thing of interest to neurosurgeons, especially someone like me who does have a deep brain stimulation is the possibility of using hypothalamic or midbrain tegmentum uh, deep brain stimulation. Generally, we just call it hypothalamic deep brain stimulation. And um, what you'll see is that uh, it can be extremely effective. And there are uh, several case reports, um, myself being on one of them as well, 
of using deep brain stimulation out of the hypothalamic region in order to uh, improve uh, cluster headaches. Um, and here you can see the pain intensity pre-surgery going from eight to 10 out of 10, down to one to five out of 10. And I'll say, you know, we generally think about a positive response of 50% improvement. Here you'll see there was a 60% improvement in headache frequency um, and 30% improvement in headache severity um, overall. Um, the interesting thing about pain is, although we always talk about 50% improvement as being a good outcome, there are many patients who will appreciate even a 20 or 30% improvement. And that has to do with how we internally score our pain. I've had a number of people I've treated that think that 30% is worth it to go through a surgical procedure. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.